Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm down here in Florida. I'm expecting a hurricane tomorrow, so I came out here to set up the tennis ball machine. And the clouds are dark, so uh, I'm supposed to hit here tomorrow and um, have a lot of rain and stuff, so I don't know when I'm going to be playing tennis again. Probably a, a week or so after, the, depending on how bad the storm is. So I uh, hope everybody's going to be safe and just make sure you have lots of water and candles and uh, Know, put your shutters up and stuff like that but anyway got my blade back a couple days ago my friend Greg restrung it for me uh, it's got hyper G in it. Um, it the mains are strung at 45 pounds and the crosses are at 43 two pounds lighter I always get the crosses lighter than the mains and uh, it feels a lot better my arm isn't hurting so much but I actually get my racket strung lower than this um, I usually get them strung around 38 pounds on the mains and then like 36, 34 on the crosses. So have the tennis ball set up, machine set up. It's very windy. <coughs> I don't know if you can see the trees. But I was out here earlier hitting off of it and I wanted to give a shout out to Coach uh, Jack Brody. I just found his channel and he talks about, um, he uses like mathematical type of uh, approach to tennis where you use your hips and um, you, you, you're fluent, you're kind of using circle eights, it's not leaner, like you're not just stepping back and hitting through through the ball like old fashioned way where you step back and hit through it. You're using your hips and um, sort of like how Federer plays, how smooth he is. Well, that's that's his te that's his te teaching style and uh, he's on YouTube and I highly suggest you go check his channel out. He's very clever and I started using it on my backhand where he was talking about looking at, I was watching Nadell and Agassi and guys where they just uh, bring their racket back and they use their hips and their rackets right net, you know, right with them the whole time they're using their hips. And I was finding out there's a couple friends of mine on here. Well, guys, I don't know them personally, but you know, like uh, winners uh, tennis only. He, he, you know, came to my channel and said, "Oh, he, he, I'm doing good," and he wished me best. And I, I appreciate that, man. Um, we're trying to set up a match in the future to play against them, but I'm trying to lose some weight and get in better shape because uh, that guy's good, man. He's He's got a really good serve, and I was just telling him that uh, if he started serving and volleying a little bit more, it'd make it a little easier you know, on it, on, for him to win some points here and there because when you're a tall person like that and a big man like he is, and he's still growing, um, it's hard to play a baseline game like that. And he did, he was doing some of the same things I was doing, like using my arms more. You know, I was using my arms on my two-hander. And after watching this guy's video, that's why I say Jack, Coach Jack Brody, check it out. I was hitting today, and it was like a butt. You're like kind of buttoned, but you're using your hips. And and that's what I was practice doing. And it's so much easier. The ball just bounce. I mean, it hit. You get a lot more power effortlessly. And you think you're using your legs correctly, but you know, it takes practice because we were taught, you know, sometimes the coaches are, are old school and they teach you this, these ways and they mean well, but you have to kind of be, you have to kind of reinvent yourself every once in a while and you got to come out here and train. And then uh, I had some guys like, oh, well, you hit a lot of balls into the net or whatever. Like it's windy out here, dude. This tennis ball machine's got so much spin on it that the ball kicks up so high sometimes it's hard to get a hold of it i'm not a professional tennis player i didn't play college tennis or anything like that i hadn't, i just started playing tennis a year ago you know at, after not playing after 25 years and uh i got a room full of trophies from from playing back in the day i used to play a lot of doubles i played singles and that's why i'm starting to play again because i got diagnosed with diabetes too and other friends of mine around my age were starting to get this so i started playing tennis again to help people and to get in shape. I was 225 pounds and now I'm down to 176, you know, around one, almost, uh, the other last time I checked myself, I was 167 pounds. So the lighter, like Coach Angelo was saying from Angelo's Tennis, the lighter you are, the better you're off, you know, on your feet and stuff. So that's what we're practicing. You know, I'm out here practicing. I'm just gonna keep practicing until I get to the level of play that I, I was at before which was around 4045 level solid, you know, um, and that was back in the 90s. So the ratings are different. They got the US uh, UTR ratings and all that stuff. And uh, I'm gonna try to play, you know, in a league this, this winter um, and, you know, get rated and all that stuff that comes along with it. Cause uh, 
as sometimes when I'm playing doubles on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's a different, there's all different levels. There are three players to four or five players. And like when I'm, uh, you know, I'm serving, I got to put people standing at the baseline. And then, you know, like I'm not really trying to serve real hard to some of these people because they're, there's older ladies and stuff and I'm not trying to crank out, you know, 90 mile an hour serves at them and stuff. But when I'm playing against the better players, uh, you know, I'll, I'll play harder, you know, with my serve and stuff, but I usually try to place it. But since I got my new racket back, I double faulted three times in one game the other day and I never double fault. So I was missing it. I'm, I'm missing it because I'm not getting enough spin on the ball. And uh, I just gotta, you know, keep playing with this racket. I w I've been playing with three different rackets because the, this one was, you know, the strings were broken on it and I was playing with this one for a while. Then I went to the Dabo Out 110 and then I was playing with the Profile 95. So this is 98 inch, you know, it's it's a smaller head racket compared to the 110. And I'm just getting, you know, getting back into it. So I'm gonna get another one of these rackets because I like the way they play. And then this other coach I was talking to, Coach K, and I was hitting with her. She thinks I should get a 100 square inch, you know, racket and a bigger racket but uh i don't know i'm just gonna i like the way that this 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 feels similar to the profile but not as thick and i like stiffer rackets um because I, I like i like to come in and volley and i also you know hit a flatter shot than most people so i just bring my racket and you know like kind of use my hips like i bring it like that and hit through it and i don't have it somebody said you know, i have a western grip no, I don't have a Western grip. I have in between an Eastern and a semi-Western grip. It's just the way that I look, the way I hit it, because I'm turning my body. And that's what I'm getting used to, because that's how I used to play. And when I learned how to play tennis, believe it or not, I've learned how to play on clay. So <laughs> you have to slide in the shots and stuff. So I'm playing on hard courts, which is a whole co completely different animal. Uh, ball bounces completely different. Everything's different about it. That's why my knees are hurt. I'm, I'm hurting myself playing on this stuff. It's tough out here, and these are old ass forks too, so there's cracks in them and all kinds of shit. You can see all the things wrong with it, but, um, you know, it's free to play out here. And in the future, I'm gonna join the Daytona Florida Club. That's where all the juniors and stuff train and all the top players train out there. And I'm gonna join that club and uh, play on the clay out there again. And, uh, you know, get some training and stuff and get with some better players. But it's hard to play sometimes out here. Like I say, uh, I, it kind of distracts me when someone's standing by like by the baseline when I'm serving because I have a good enough serve where you can stand at the, even my second serve is good enough where you can be, you should be standing up at the net so what will happen is since I'm, I'm not playing you know like real hard I'll, I'll throw a serve in there and then they'll drop shot it and I have to serve and volley to either you know come in and this person's standing back and then you know, letting balls go down the middle of the court it's just they're not playing doubles correctly compared to how I, I was taught how to play. And even back in the 90s or in the 80s and stuff, when I used to play at the Ocean's Racket Club with 3-0, 3-5 players, they all played at the net. It, I don't know why people want to play in the back. We're not playing college uh, college where, you know, these people got huge serves and stuff like that. We're regular people and you're really at a disadvantage and it distracts people. Now, if you're playing high level players, and they're eating you up at the net with lobs and stuff like that then you got you have to play back a little bit but if you're not playing at, at that level and even even at that level you you're just giving them the whole entire court to hit any kind of shot they want you need to put no pressure on these folks okay and that's why you want to be at the net because if you move around a little bit at the net i'm not saying be a jackass and stuff but that's your job as a net person is to distract the returner you know and act like you're gonna poach, but you have to poach a few times in the match because they, they're just not gonna bite on it. So uh, to make them try to go down the line or to throw them off just enough where they hit a bad return and you can put the ball away and if it's short. And I'm not a tall person, so I get a lot. I mean, if I can get some of these balls and put them overheads away and easy volleys, people that are taller than me should be able to do it. And there are a lot of people taller than me that play out here that still play from the baseline and uh, in doubles on first serves and stuff like so if, if you're doing that you're really putting a lot of pressure on your own partner because it's distracting to me because i look at the per i have peripheral vision so i'm looking 
at where I'm going to hit the ball, but I don't look at the box like I already know where I'm going to hit the ball. When I serve, I look at the back of the fence and keep, try to keep my head up after I hit the ball because I already know where the ball where I'm trying to put the ball at. And it helps you from double faulting. But what I mean by double faulting, like I'm just on the lines like this by this mush and shit like that. But the other day, I actually hit the tape and I don't like that. That just pisses me off. So let's let's hit some balls. I'm talking about.
I'm trying to use my hips more, so I'm learning a whole new way of hitting compared to how I used to hit. I used to just bring the racket back and hit through it, step into it, but I'm actually using my hips more to, to turn into the shot. And I'm trying to keep on my back end, the racket close to my body as I'm turning. Just like this guy was saying, Bruce Brody, uh, Jack Brody was saying, and how Nadell watch Nadell and Agassi they don't bring their racket back first. They got their, they got their bodies, and where their body goes, because you can literally just like, if you just go like that with your hips and don't even hit the ball, like if you just do this, you get a lot, you get more power than just swinging at it like this, bringing it through. Of course, I'm hitting through it, you know, but I'm bringing my hips to do it. As you can see, the ball's coming. I'm stepping with my back foot and I'm pushing off of it, you know, I'm trying to use my hips and my legs more and bending my legs. And I have two replaced hips, so I'm, you know, I'm stretching my body out to get more limber and practice it. And then you want to keep your hands close to your, after you hit, because they're, they're telling you, the pros are like, uh, the t teachers are like, oh, put the ball like this and then let it go and go like that. Well, what happens is you're bringing your head up and that's why you're missing balls long into the net sometimes but the way this guy's talking about you hit through it and bring keep your hand close to your chest too so you're moving your your hips are doing the work 
not your arms. Because these are the big parts of your body, your hips, your buttocks, your stomach muscles. That's what you're getting all your power at. Believe me, try it. That guy's right. I mean, you can step into the ball too, but that's, that's linear tennis. And this guy's talking about circle eights. And I did watch, you know, videos on, on, on Federer, like he was saying, and Agassi, and he's right. If you watch how Federer hits, it's, it's like a circle eight. He's using his, the core of his body. He doesn't really, he's not really using, he's uh, trying to hit muscle the ball with his arms. He's using, and keep in mind too, these folks are over six foot tall, except for Agassi. Agassi is like 5'10". So somebody like my dude over there, Trey, T uh, you know, winners tennis, he's a tall guy. So if he starts practicing hitting with his hips and turning into the ball like this gentleman's saying, Coach, Coach Brody, He's gonna crush the ball because he's got leverage being a taller dude, you know? He'll be his backhand will get more consistent. It's gonna be fun playing when I get out better. It's gonna be fun playing. I can't wait to see it. Cause I like returning serves, you know, big people serves. I I my whole life I've been, you know, I've had to to in tennis the tennis world, I've had to go up against guys that are big servers, especially in my era when I grew up, everybody was serving and volleying. But I mean, it's something good to throw in, like I was saying in his case, because he's cracking balls into a 120 range, you know, for serves. So, you know, even if somebody gets a racket on it, they're going to have to put that ball at his feet to, to make him, you know, to make him uh, pop the ball up. And that's going to be hard to do consistently. So most of the returns are just going to be easy putaways for this fella. And then, you know, he was doing some of the same things I was doing. When the short ball was coming, like he miss it, he'll miss it not all the time now. Don't get me wrong, uh, he'll miss it wide or maybe hit it into net because we're trying to arm it. Him and I were both doing the same thing. That's why I was saying, I watch myself on the videos, and I'm just explaining because he's, he's, he's his level is picking up too. So that's why I, I use him as an example. And there's other guys on here. Alex is playing good tennis, and um, you know uh, Matthew Choi was playing good tennis. There's a lot of good players. Winston Dew is playing. Mark Santes was playing against Winston. Some of these matches, Winston, I think there's some tanking going on, dude, for ratings. I have to tell you, for views. I've been watching tennis for a long time, and I know when people tank matches and tank sets, and believe me, it looked like Mark was tanking some games on you. Uh, and I, you play a lot better. Some, I, I know you play a lot better than you're actually showing people. Because uh, there's some times where you you let go and you let loose and he hits a really good shot most of the time He's a great player. He's a very good player, but uh, you know some of these dudes on here They um they want to have They're getting their channels big and, and and I in my personal opinion I've been watching tennis for a long time I think some of these matches some of the guys are letting off the gas to keep the games closed so people are watching them, you know because if I bet you, if you put five hundred dollars in on these sets, and uh, you put some money on these sets, these dudes will be out there playing top the best they could play, and and won't even let you try to win a game on you. But um, you know, it's all in fun. I, I don't mind it. I'm just saying. I'm joking around with them too. Um, I think that we can, you know, we'll have a good. Can, uh, there's a lot of different channels popping up in tennis, and a lot, a lot of people helping each other get better and stuff, and that's cool. And that's why I started this channel to get better at tennis and meet different people from all around America and around the world. It's fun. I enjoy the game of tennis. It's good exercise and it's something you can do your entire life. Like I told you, I have some players that I play with on Monday and Wednesday and Friday. Some of these, uh, there's a lady that's 87, another one is 94, and they're doubles, you know, play doubles. We have fun. I enjoy playing tennis with anybody. I don't go, I'm not one of them people that say, oh, well, they're not good enough for me to play against. I play to the level that I play at. You know, if I'm playing people that are, are beginners, then I'll just put the ball and play, you know? If I'm playing people at my level or better or, at, you know, or around there, I'll, I'll, I'll play to my le that level and have fun. But I try to have fun as much as possible. Sometimes I do get irritated, like I say about this double thing, because you're not gonna win that way. I mean, the other people are trying to win, but they're not going to win that way. You can't win in doubles if there's nobody playing the net. <laughs> you know, that's what the whole thing is. You're trying to 
take out you're playing half the court and it ain't singles and very rare occasions in my opinion should both players be playing back you know when at the beginning of the serve like when your partner's serving and i don't care if they have a weak serve or not you still should be at the net because i play with people that have weak serves and i still play the net and i still get easy volleys to put away and just because your presence at the net you distract these people and that's your job i'm not saying blow a, ball, a horn and shit while they're trying to return serve but you know show them that you're gonna poach and fake poach you know if you poach once or twice they're gonna go down the line then you can sit on them you know and hit the hit the easy volleys uh i usually so i sometimes just hit it right back at their feet they, they they try to rip a ball at me down the line or hit rip it at me i'll bounce it right i'll, I'll bounce it right at their partner because their partner's usually standing at the service line watching a call you know to see if the ball's in or not i'll, I'll rip it right at their feet you know or back at the person who hit it at me i'll rip it right back at their feet and then they'll pop it up and then if i get an overhead i'll hit in the open court i don't hit at people i don't try to do that you can seriously hurt somebody and i'm not trying to do that but uh i appreciate everybody watching i'm gonna round these balls up and we're gonna get some more there is a big hurricane coming and it's the calm before the storm as they say so i appreciate everybody's help i appreciate everybody's support and i wanted to say thank you to trey for stopping by and and, and wishing me uh, best on my knee injury and stuff. Thank you very much. Um, you're a good dude, and I look forward to meeting you in person and playing on, you know, playing against you in the future. I'm working hard to do that, so it'll be competitive, and uh, and also bring people together to play more tennis together. And that's what's more important than anything. The more people that are playing tennis, the better off everybody is. You're gonna be in better shape. You're gonna have be able to meet new people from all around the world and it's a game that you can play for your entire life you know i mean for fuck's sakes people are playing tennis in wheelchairs so if they can do that i can come out here with two replace tips and uh diabetes too and, and and play some tennis you know and just uh you just gotta keep working at it and uh i'm gonna do what that coach uh, Bro uh jack Brody was saying i'm gonna start trying to hit on my hips and make it easier on me uh to hit my shot so Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.